Across the country, faculty are devising ways to embed CUSIN competencies across the curriculum. The learning strategies on the CUSIN website provide many examples of classroom, simulation lab, and clinical learning activities to assist in these efforts. The learning modules in this series similarly provide important concepts for faculty to consider. Concepts like mindfulness, work complexity, cognitive stacking, all provide new ways for faculty to think about how students are prepared for practice. In this module, I will build on these ideas and explore how faculty can engage students in thinking through quality and safety and the complexities of nursing practice in post-clinical conferences. Following completion of this module, participants will be able to explore learning opportunities in post-clinical conferences, examine a teaching strategy that helps students make sense of their clinical experience and the impact they have on quality and safe patient care, and describe techniques that enable students to reflect on and examine their own clinical learning. To begin, let's consider the background for my work with post-clinical conferences. In 2010, I was part of a research team interested in understanding what really goes on during clinical. Amid reports of increased student downtime, clinical site restriction on student activities, and the difficulties of providing adequate guidance and supervision, this study was designed to document student activities during clinical and the nature of the interaction between students and their faculty by conducting three-hour direct observations of students and faculty during clinical. Following the observation, the observer interviewed the student or faculty members specifically on the cognitive work in which they were engaged during the experience. This method was adopted from human science engineering. Interviews were recorded and transcribed. Data analysis is underway to uncover how faculty and students think about these experiences, specifically focusing on cues, expectations, goals, rationale, and learning. This is an example of the transcribed data in which a student was being observed. To patient room, introduced observer to patient, asked patient if he needed anything, acknowledged patient asking for water, to hall, sanitizes hands, listening to RN explain order for surgery, asking RN for clarification of order, and so on. As you can imagine, three hours of observation results in a lot of data. Some of this is exactly what you would expect as students are engaged in the day-to-day -day work of nursing. Importantly, in this instance, if we were to read through several pages of observation data, you would see that during this interaction, the patient became very angry with the student. This slide shows how investigators approached the focus interviews. As each interview began, the investigator, who was also the observer, identified and reviewed a particular encounter the student or faculty had during the observation. In this particular case, the student was asked to recall the point in time when the patient became angry. Breaking the experience into parts, the interviewer walks the student through what was observed. When all the parts have been identified, the student is asked to return to the beginning of the experience and to tell the investigator, what were you thinking about at this time? What was going through your head? Or similar questions. Cognitive task analysis, or CTA, used as an interview strategy, captures details of a specific incident from the participant's own experience and the learning associated with that experience. An in-depth understanding of the student's thinking associated with actions and decisions resulted. Let me now share with you the student's response. Initially, I didn't even plan on going into the room until as I walked by, I noticed he had a visitor. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to introduce myself and find out, well, because it's difficult getting information from him because of his complications with speech and everything. So I went specifically to the nephew, introduced myself, talked with him a little bit, and then just tried to strike up a conversation with the patient. You know, like, how are you related and how are you doing? And then he told me a little bit of information about himself. 
And once there was really, you know, a good rapport with him, then I started to ask questions about what he knows about what brought him here and about his living conditions. And does he know anything about his medications? Because there was someone else who said that they were surprised how many medications he was on. And once I started asking about if he's ever had any complications or, you know, how he takes his medication, then I noticed he started to get a little cold and distant and was really quiet. And that's when I started to really kind of back away a little bit and notice that, okay, well, I'll let you guys spend some time together and I'll come back and let me know if you need anything. And as I started to walk away, I heard him utter something under his breath, which I wanted to address because it didn't sound very, it was something to the effect of stay out of my business or something. And I said, excuse me, I didn't hear you because it's been difficult to understand him the whole time. And he said, you heard me. And it just, I could tell he was angry. So I wanted to kind of smooth it over because this was still in the middle of my shift and I'm still going to be caring for him and I didn't want any more problems. And I just explained that I'm sorry if I offended you and if you're angry. I'm just trying to get some more background because I don't have all the information I need immediately. I have to go to charts and I have to talk to other nurses and still it seemed like information is scattered so I'm trying to get it as quickly and easy as possible and then he expressed his anger some more and then I apologized. I said I won't do it again I'm sorry but let me know if you need anything and then left the room. And then after that I went over and I told my nurse what happened and explained everything and she kind of took it and understood and it was kind of left at that. Obviously this student has a lot to think about related to this experience. This is really the kind of thinking we want our early students to engage in as they begin thinking through the complex situations they encounter. Before you continue, you might think about how you would respond to this student. How would you continue to engage her in thinking about this experience? As the observation continued, the student's instructor arrived on the unit. Let's look again at what the observer noted. To conference area with instructor. Provided evidence for assessment. Discuss medications and diet. Discuss specifics of observation of patient eating meal. Shared priorities for patient education and preparation for discharge. Doing five minute practice report. Discussing priorities for the remainder of the shift. Sharing ideas for assessing ambulation. Listening to instructor ask questions. Problem solving ambulation problems with instructor. Talking with instructor about coordination of breathing, treatments, meals, and ambulation. Discussing complex pain syndrome with instructor. What is important here, it seems, is that these questions do not draw out, extend, or enhance the student's situated thinking. They are perfectly good questions in and of themselves. These are aspects of care we want students to consider. Yet what seems to be missing here is the connection between what the student was seeing, hearing, and thinking about while interacting with her patient and the conversations she had with her faculty. As the research team worked through this data, I began to think how frequently I, as a clinical instructor, work with students to get the work done and to assess their knowledge via quizzing, and how often I may miss what they are really thinking about and learning in clinical. We began to discuss as a team how we might engage more intentionally in exploring their clinical experiences. We are finding through our collective interview data, combined with previous studies using CTA to understand nursing complexity, that this approach to questioning provides an in-depth understanding of student thinking associated with action and decisions, identifies cognitive skills or mental demands that are needed to perform a task proficiently, focuses on describing and representing the cognitive elements that underlie goal generation, decision-making, and judgments, and facilitates students' ability to see the big picture and the complexity of care and situations while moving them away from more linear thinking. For more information on work complexity, see Module 1 in this QSIN series. Other studies reporting the use of CTA 
are provided in the resource section of this module. It seemed that the use of CTA within the clinical setting could be an approach to assess the student's thoughts about their patient's care in the context of the situation that had occurred rather than through my prescribed checklist of discussion points and tasks. The challenge became finding the time. Could I determine a relevant situation and apply this strategy to draw out students' thinking and assess if learning was occurring with all 10 students individually? The solution became to trial the method during post-conference, utilizing one scenario that I knew had transpired on the unit, thus gaining a better understanding of the student's thinking while engaging her peers in the learning as well. My clinical group typically consisted of five to 10 students during any given week that participated in post-conference. The pilot group did consist of eight females and two males. Initially, I chose the topic to discuss during post-conference based on my observations from the day or by speaking with students individually during rounding throughout the day. Permission was obtained from the student to discuss their experience during post-conference and to delve more deeply into the experience to facilitate learning of the entire group. Choosing the topic in advance gave me the opportunity to consider how I might weave course learning objectives and incorporate quality and safety issues into the discussion. This particular day, a student had had an experience in the emergency department in which the staff was preparing for and taking care of a patient in cardiac arrest. I had discussed the encounter with the student and she stated she would be willing to share it in post-conference. I also gave her a brief description of things I might ask since this was our first utilization of the CTA technique and I didn't want her to become uncomfortable in the presence of her peers. To begin the conversation, I described a general CTA process and asked the other students to save their comments until the end when there would be plenty of time for questions and discussion once the involved student had exhausted her own share. I found the other students to be anxious to ask questions and interject their own similar experiences. But as was discussed in module six of this series, intentional listening is an important aspect of the learning process. Having the students save their comments and notice their own thinking facilitated their engagement and intentional listening. As the student began to describe her experience, I picked out a few main points, not more than five, to write on a whiteboard or flip chart. I clarified that these points summarized the student's encounter, then began to probe each point individually, just as we had done during the research interviews. Diagramming the response illustrates the complexity that is involved in each thought, assumption, and decision. At times, writing everything down really helps students sort through all that was going on. Be aware, however, that sometimes this became distracting and seemed to interfere with the student's ability to engage in active listening. Each circle in the diagram is a main point that the student found significant enough to mention as she recounted her experience in the ED and would be the focus point of the discussion, again breaking the story into parts for further inquiry. In this case, the student mentioned that while in the ED nursing station, a call came through announcing that a patient would be arriving within minutes in full cardiac arrest. She went on to describe the scene as the patient arrived in the ED and eventually how difficult it was to intubate the coding patient. Within each main point, I asked probing questions to illustrate the student's goals, thoughts, observations, and so forth. I let the student lead the conversation and simply ask questions to deepen her thinking within each of these areas to be probed. For example, tell me more about what you noticed. Or, it sounds like you were feeling eager what do you think led to that? The real learning came from probing each of the responses she gave. For example, in goals, was getting ready for the patient your goal or the nurse's goal? Her response, the nurse's goal. Okay, what was your goal? Under prompts, why do you think you picked up on the fact that respiratory was called? And within thinking, Tell me more about, shouldn't they be here by now? There may not be an answer to each area. For example, 
She did not have any surprises with this discussion point, but may have with the next point of the story. After exhausting the thinking that surrounded the first point of the story, we proceeded to the next point. In this example, the patient's actual arrival to the ED. At this point, the remaining students could no longer refrain from expressing their curiosity. Questions such as, what were the nurses doing at this point? And what was going on with the family while all of this was occurring? Began to lead the discussion. The students were seeking to make sense of the situation and wanted to understand the big picture through the learning that had emerged. My role at this point became to continue to bring the conversation back to what were you thinking during this time? And why do you think staff chose to do this before they did that? It became apparent that this depth of focused reflection through probing questions could foster teamwork and collaboration through the student's appreciation of their peers' thoughts and feelings and the development of relationships through sharing. This is also where the opportunity to weave both course competencies and CUSIN competencies presented itself. Asking questions such as, so, describe some of the prioritization that you witnessed when the patient arrived, helps to further students' learning by illustrating some of the thinking of the experienced nurses that may have gone initially unnoticed by the novice student's eyes. Also, her peer's question regarding the family opened an opportunity to discuss the student's feelings and opinions about family presence during resuscitation, thus enabling students to further discuss the ethical and legal ramifications of patient-centered care and the challenges around families being a full collaborator in that provision of care. Such contextual discussions elicit a much deeper sense of meaning for the students compared to the faculty walking into post-conference and announcing that today we're going to talk about family presence during resuscitation. In moving on to the third and final point for this scenario, other ways to utilize CTA to assess learning and bridge students' knowledge to situation awareness developed. The student expressed her feelings of concern that it was taking so long to intubate the patient. She expressed relief when staff suggested returning to back mass ventilation before trying another attempt. She noticed the anxiety levels within the room were rising and even considered whether she should leave the room. In first directing the conversation back to the concern she was feeling by simply asking, why are you concerned? She was able to share her understanding of hypoxia and the potential adverse outcomes associated with it. This of course led to the relief she felt when the staff suggested oxygen delivery. Other questions such as, why were you considering leaving the room? Or were you surprised that staff suggested halting intubation attempts? explored further the complexity of her thinking in that moment. The outcome of this focused questioning was the illustration of her knowledge and the importance of remaining patient-centered, the skill involved in intervening in the midst of an emergent situation, and the ways that the stress of emergency circumstances impact teamwork and collaboration. This is an illustration of the completed CTA process as it applies to this scenario. The discussion in its entirety typically takes between 20 and 40 minutes. Consider for a moment how you might implement this strategy into your clinical conference setting. In the explanation of the discussion, talk about the overall goal sharing specific learning experiences that have occurred on the unit during the day and focusing on uncovering clinical thinking. To help explain the process of using CTA, comments can be used such as, I've been a nurse for a long time and can't always recall the thinking and emotions that go along with new experiences. Yet, those experiences influence our behavior on the unit and are important to recognize and talk about. Select an experience that will further both individual and group thinking, as well as enable the ability to incorporate cues and competencies. If no experience was witnessed, ask the students to talk about an aha moment that they encountered, 
and use the same process to probe the experience. Capture three to five main points of the story and clarify those points with the student. Be sure the questions are an extension of the student's observations, thoughts, and so on. To facilitate their discovery, let them lead the conversation. The practice of intentional listening and having no prescribed plan was difficult for me at first. I felt the need to be in control of the conversation and therefore would think about how I was going to respond. When I simply allowed myself to listen and clarify and probe, then the learning points revealed themselves, and I was able to pick up on any unintended learning. The summarization of the discussion allowed me the opportunity to emphasize or clarify those learning points, to provide feedback regarding inconsistencies between theory and practice, and to offer suggestions for further reflection. Consideration of the context of using CTA is important and might include the comfort level of the student. Some people are naturally more reflective and eager to share. To draw others in, some questions might include, can anyone relate to those emotions or that thinking? Or, has anyone had a similar situation? Since the time of the pilot, I have utilized CTA during post-conference of a clinical day spent in our multidisciplinary simulation lab and during one-on-one -on -one discussions with students on the unit. The process may be somewhat abbreviated, but the intent remains to understand how a student is thinking about his or her own actions and the actions of others involved in the situation and how those perceptions affect the quality and safety. A formal evaluation of this approach is currently being designed, but as with all new approaches we try, I have tried to pay close attention to if and how this approach is helpful to students as they learn. Overall, I have noticed that students are thinking in more complex ways about the situations they encounter. I find that all students are more engaged in the post-conference dialogue and are becoming more adept at reflective thinking. Important. I have found that I am better able to understand how students see and think about the situations they encounter, and it helps me foster this thinking in a more intentional way. I have found I have fewer concerns about students' ability to see the big picture because we work consistently on developing that ability. Post-clinical conference provides an important opportunity for us to foster students' achievement of acute and competence. The approach I have been developing is based on the assumption that transforming nursing education cannot occur by merely changing what we do. We must transform how we think about nursing education. For me, this meant changing my post-clinical conference from having students merely report what they saw and did that day. Instead, I now continue to work hard on asking more probing questions to uncover the students' thinking and to hear how they were making sense of the situations they encounter. This has dramatically changed how I spend time with students and has helped students to recognize and think through the complexity of the practice they are 